everyone, my name is Irene and welcome to my channel Living Around where we talk all about plants and tropical gardens. Today I am so so happy and excited to bring to you to a tour of not just a beautiful garden but a beautiful home. A house that has won awards at a Malaysia very prestigious architectural award, the PAM. But before we go into the house, let's tour the garden a little. And before we start, I just want to share with you that um, this is the garden not of a plant craze and uh, a very hands-on gardening person. This is the landscape and the garden of someone who appreciates green spaces and would like to have a nice garden to enjoy. In. The plants that we see here today are more the easy to care for plants, which is good news for some of us, and also more accessible and uh, you don't have to be so hands-on about it. Hey Lucas! Hi, okay, my friend here Lucas is furiously doing uh, gardening just just before we film <laughs> because um, we didn't have time to touch up. So this garden is not like touched up and curated prior to the shooting. It's happening right now. So I just want to introduce Lucas Go. It's a fabulous designer in Kuching and he has helped to design parts of the house. Okay, welcome to Bonio Mansion. <laughs> so today, Lucas, I will be um, doing the tour. You need to do gardening very fast before I get to the section. <laughs> Go ahead. Is there a particular plant you want to point out to me? Well, I think they are all interesting. Right? These are the heliconias. Oh yeah. And this one, they are kind of rare in Kuching. Mm -hmm. Those are those ones. Those Longissima. Ones, those actually grow up to about 9 feet. Wow, okay. Plant. Yes, okay. Let's go there and check out the heliconia he's talking about. I'll leave you to your gardening chores. So as you walk in, you are greeted by a row of heliconias. And I do love heliconia for landscaping. This one, I believe, is the heliconia caribia. And it's really bright red and really pop. Um, you can see some some Brax flowers here but actually the owner has cut down a lot and use it for interior decoration like a cut flower so now let's come up oh here you can see a row of uh, crotons crotons are very easy plants they are quite forgiving you can have it in full sun or partial sun and let's see what else okay here now we are at the front of the house and as you could see there are some uh, perforated wire thing that's like in triangular protruding shape and this is very interesting very unique it is inspired by the pinnacle at Miri so this house is very much nature inspired and now let's come to, oh, okay, here we have actually the golden chain. The golden chain is a tree that gives out this beautiful bracts, yellow, yellow flowers that hangs down. And this is not native to Malaysia. I was told that um, our ex-minister, Dr. Mahate, his wife, Siti Hasma, actually brought this plant in from abroad many decades ago. And uh, this is how this first plant got into Malaysia. I can't remember what country it was. Okay, so I will now hop over actually. Later we will pop into the house. So I will now hop over to this cluster of heliconia that's here. Okay, here, this is the patch of Heliconia. I believe this is called the Heliconia longissima. And you know what? This leaf, I think, is uh, a little disease. I am going to help them to get rid of it. So, you can also see the bright butter. So, okay. So, whoops. So, this Heliconia... Uh, the common hanging ones that we know is the rostrata. The rostrata has a tinge of yellow, but this one is completely red. Uh, this is not at its prime, it's a little bit past its prime, so it doesn't look as, as vibrant, the red. But this can grow very, very long, like up to nine 
feet, I was told. And I do have one at home. Actually, I got mine after I saw it here about a couple of years ago and I was really inspired. So this is a fresher one and um, it's not very long yet. So there's still more room for it to go down. So Heliconia longissima, if you want something that really has the height and you enjoy having this long red bracts. Here we see the Heliconias are grown in the middle patch and it is given a lot of room. So there's no other plants that is like very close to it. And Heliconias do need their space. And so if you're thinking about Heliconia, uh, do be aware that they can spread very fast. In fact, in some areas they're considered as weeds, but I just love them. These large tropical leaves, you know, gives a really nice tropical feel to any garden. So uh, if you want to control the growth of your Heliconia, do put in about two feet of some blocks. For me at home, I've put two feet worth of bricks inside so that it doesn't grow beyond that to kind of contain its growth within a particular area. And another thing to note for Heliconia is that once you have uh, the bracts out, like this one, so you only flower once. So after this is done, then you do need to cut down this particular stalk because it will never flower again. And when you cut it, then it will encourage new growth and new shoots. And just to give you a little more appreciation of the entire thing, uh, we have some tall trees that's around. And if you look up, they are giving them a rather nice shade to the garden. So these heliconias at the bottom are enjoying filtered light. They are not in direct sunlight although they can also withstand quite a bit of sunlight. So we've now gone to the backyard while Lucas furiously works the front yard before we get there. And I'm gonna go through the garden um, with this too so that I could help her to cut down any leaves that, that needs to be trimmed. Okay, so here, my favorite plant here in this section is this cyc cyclap cyclap I can't remember what it's called. Cyclanthus bipartitus is this plant. So actually, I had thought this is some kind of a fern, but it's not, it's a different genus. So I used to call it the rugby fern tree, but yeah, it's a Cyclanthus bipartitus. And here it has grown into huge, amazing chunks. So look, this is all of it that's right here. And so this makes me realize I should put mine on the ground because I've got mine currently in um, pots and they are pretty tiny. And look at what happens when they're on the ground. They look like they're about 15 feet tall. And this is um, just incredible, huge foliage. I hope you can appreciate that. Right over here, we have the Alocasia black stem. So you could see the stem is so gorgeous. It's entirely black and its leaves are up there. If you could see, it's getting really big now. That one with this um, black vein as well. So it's a really nice contrast. So a little more special than the usual Alocasia mycorrhiza. And this one, its leaves getting old. I'm gonna help them cut it away. Air. It looks maybe a little diseased too, I'm not sure. So, oops. Okay, and then more Heliconias. And so let's do some maintenance of these brown leaves that we no longer need. Okay, so this stem, this one actually, you could see all the leaves that it has now is the single leaf that is brown. So I will actually even cut off um, right at the bottom. So, because this is now, yeah, past its life, gives way to new growth. Oh, I want you to take note of this little walkway. It's really, really enveloping you as you walk through because of um, the layering effect. So you could see there are plants that's on the ground 
and then there are heliconias arising up from it and then there's also flanked by trees so really forming this archway that gives you that nice cozy view a lovely pathway to walk through and all sorts of plants are interspersed here this is the fig tree actually the common fiddle fig lime no fiddle fig tree so a lot of people try to plant this indoor actually because a lot of instagram photos show this tree being planted indoor but in my experience it does much much better outdoor i had a lot of problems with pests with this tree indoor ficus lirata that's the proper name of this fig tree which i forgot now um i just want to move back to where we were before because i missed out a few things that i forgot to show you so this is what we call pandan so the pandan is, is uh, commonly used here to flavor a uh, dessert or soup whatever cooking and here so it, this is an edible and um, lucas was just sharing with me that this is actually very good for deterring snakes in the garden so if you're someone who's worried about snakes and you're looking for some plants to deter them so apparently they don't like the pandan and they are very very easy growing plant they do need a fair amount of sunlight to keep it healthy though and another easy growing plant is actually the spider lily they look gorgeous and the good thing about it is actually they're very easy to care for you could just leave them here on the ground and they make really good uh, ground covers they grow up to about your waistline well my waistline anyway because i'm pretty pretty short so another easy plant if you are looking for something for landscaping and you do not want to be that hands-on gardener and then i would like to draw your attention to the tree that's here um, the layman like me call it the leopard skin tree because look at the beautiful gorgeous patterns and it tends to shed its bark so the Chinese will call this tuo pi shu literally saying it sheds its skin a tree that sheds its skin I will try and drop the proper name um, for the tree somewhere here below but look at this gorgeous gorgeous patterns so I think I have a few of them too in my own home they are just quite decorative actually the trunk oh and yes the ginger plant Lucas was sharing with me also that the ginger plant actually flowers profusely or any flowering plants actually if you give it this special fertilizer that he's discovered so what he does is he soaked the skin of the onion onion skin soaked for a couple of days in water and then used this water to water his flowering plants he swears by it that the flowers just bloom really a lot after that so a good tip there for you do try it and let me know if it works I almost forgot there are begonias right here on the ground it's kind of amazing to me because uh, I grow mainly mostly in pots and here they are as ground covers so I'm gonna investigate a little bit on actually what they are grown in and it seems like they are in some kind of a sandy soil and then it looks like yeah it doesn't have any particularly special care just left on its own to thrive amazing and this plant i'm not sure the name of it so if you do know it please let me know again lucas was sharing with me that you can use this to boil tea and it's actually um, very nutritious very cooling and look at there's like the maroon purple underside to it it looks quite pretty too it's almost like you know blue yeah it's kind of greenish blue with this purple undertone and then as you look up there is more of this plant that i keep forgetting the name but it's in this shape of like rugby balls very nice and let's see what else we have we have here heliconias that needs to be trimmed 
and then again alocasia black stem um yeah this could be like i'm not sure it could be a, a fungal infection you know what i just thought of something i've just done something that's not very good practice because after you cut a plant that especially if you think they're diseased you should really uh, clean the cutter and disinfect it so that you don't infect the other plants so please remember to do that and do not do just what i did and i'm just gonna stop cutting anything now <laughs> and now let's draw our eyes down to the ground there are some nice caladium this is the thai beauty or uh, this is much more vibrant so the more sun you give this actually the more vibrant this caladium will be and oh this is a plant i'm not familiar with at all it seems really interesting the leaf has another leaf look at that and then but this one doesn't yet oh this one has like two full grown leaves um in it oh wait i've also spotted that there's a tray here i think they should remove it otherwise it gathers water and that's not good for a mosquito okay what else okay this is the elastica uh, rubber tree and uh, very easy going uh, Lucas was just telling me so easy to care for it does not die at all on him anyway okay now actually we're at kind of like a center courtyard where there is this huge tree on oh, its the house there's like three sides of the house surrounding it so as you can imagine then if you are inside the house and you're looking out this is kind of like bringing nature into your living room and the dining room and the kitchen and what do we have here we have quite simple and easy plants uh, these this is a huge bird nest fern right here beside the tree and then a lot of Devenbachia Defenbachias are very, very easy. You could have them indoor or outdoor, and they are okay in the shade or filtered sun. You can train them also to be in full sun. And this one has kind of toppled over, and they are very, very resilient. Um, they are also called dumb cane, and there's a lot of... Um, okay, so you would have heard that uh, this plant is very toxic, uh, but it doesn't deter me from planting it because you know you just have to make sure you do not eat this plant that's all so what it has is um, if you cut it it will exude this liquid <sighs> again my mind escapes me something oxalate calcium oxalate that if you get it on your skin it will be very itchy so so don't get that on your skin and do not eat it and you'll be fine but if you have pets and you're worried that they are could not could not help themselves but it's this sort of plan then maybe don't don't have this if you have pets however having said that the lady of the house here i have seen has about 15 cats and dogs so maybe they don't come out <laughs> Eileen! oh good to see you this is the lady of the house thank you so much for letting me wander around your garden you're welcome. Thanks for coming. Yeah. <laughs> you have a gorgeous home and garden. Thank you. I was helping you to uh, do a little bit of trimming and gardening just now while I was doing oh, the tour. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, could we come in and have a quick look in the house too? Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. It would be a real treat to the viewers. <laughs> thank you. Okay, I will continue now with a bit of the front of the garden. Okay. All right. So we're in a sitting area here where you could see the wood that's being used is really nice and rustic and then some vintage furniture and then if you look over here I think this is like an old vintage door and I love the colors contrasting against the concrete so if you haven't realized by now the house is mostly like concrete and grey colour so this little pop of colour is really refreshing and here also there is some some amazing natural artwork I, I'm not sure if maybe this is the root of a tree or something that's being put together 
and there's actually several separate pieces. So this is one piece and that's another piece, but they're kind of cut out in the same dimension height to give it that unified look. I just carry it like this. What is one hand, this one Oh. It's like you are bringing the clutch. This one is happy. Macam ni. I think they pun tak tahu. I don't know how to carry one. Okay. Oh. How are you? Are we rolling yet? <laughs> so I'm not really a dog person, but this cute little dog here, I just can't resist it. And I hope it doesn't pee or poo on me while I carry it. <laughs> okay, now let's admire the garden. Look here, what's his name, Magic? Magic, look, look at this bromeliad. It's sitting comfortably on a tree, and that's how we should... Ah, it's peeing! I think, never mind. Never mind, it's okay, don't panic. <laughs> so bromeliads on a tree, it's a nice natural way to decorate your bromeliad. Uh, crotons right here below. Okay, like this maybe, to protect your modesty. Here are these things here at the bottom. Crotons, they give a touch of uh, green and colors also. Very easy plants. Look. Look, bromeliads, this one have even um, red colour in the middle, these bromeliads. Oh, okay, so bromeliads are kind of for me a replacement for flowers. If you can't really have a lot of flowers or you could treat them as a huge long-lasting flower, the bromeliad. These are here cartons. Look at that magic. Do you like cartons? Mm. Cartons are another plant that's easy growing and their leaves also change color. As you can see here on this specimen, the older leaves are looking more dark. It, it's even got dark, well it's nearly black with a touch of red. But then the younger leaves are green with a touch of yellow. Okay, let's see. This is a very good dog, like even easier than a baby. I might think about getting a pet now. They don't eat plants. So now let's check out the inside. Hello. Wow, well, for me. Thank you so much. That's so nice. So I'll drink this while I do the tour. As you can see, we are now in this lovely living room with this gorgeous height in the ceiling and I adore this fan and it opens up to the garden in the front and then if you could swing your eyes, it's like, oh, a nice grand piano that's white. I was made to take piano lessons when I was young for eight years. And okay, so this is harvested from their own garden. And that is why we didn't see very much flowers outside earlier. But look at this. So another perk of uh, planting Heliconia is you can always get these fresh cut flowers or bracts and decorate your home with it. And then I like to lead your eyes this way out. This is that central courtyard. We were there just now filming, so now you could appreciate the effect when you are indoor and then you could see outside. Let me attempt to see if this can be open or it's locked in. So let's try again.
and now we come to the dining area and I am much more drawn to the fact that it really opens up big way to the outside so you can let all these greens that we were appreciating earlier come into your room and then this is the living area and look at this sofa I'm kind of like very intrigued by it because it's so deep set extends all the way down to my short legs and I can imagine I can quickly drift off the bed here and so lovely to be flanked by these nice tall green lush plants and garden outside so guys um, I don't know if you're planning to build a house maybe a good idea is to have lots of window spaces so you could enjoy your greens while you're still indoor cocoon up in your air conditioned room now we come to the side here and then there's like this strip of pool I think it's a really great lap pool because it's really really long and then notice the um, pergola structure that surrounds it I think there's a bee there I'm a little scared and then this this vine is lovely this beautiful huge flowers um, the bees really love it so I'm a little terrified of the bees there do you see the bees <laughs> okay so um, sorry okay so the, the bees love this plot if you like to have bees around your house and have beautiful viney climbing plant you should get this plant I will uh, find out what's the name and let you know so okay so the structure around it that encourages the vine to grow from below and then cover to give this pool a little shade so we've come to the end of the tour guys i hope you've enjoyed this episode the tour of an award-winning home and its garden now a great home deserves to have a great garden to accompany it and if you don't think you have a great home well not many of us do i think a nice garden can really make a difference to it so if you've enjoyed this episode please do consider subscribing and sharing it with others to my next video bye bye